now we look at uh, trichuriasis, another helminthic infection. Okay, so trichuriasis is basically also a worm infection by a worm called uh, Trichurius trichuria, which is also a nematode, uh, and uh, it's also referred to as a whip worm. Uh, the whip worm name comes from its distinctive shape, okay, which is like whip like. Okay, obviously, the female uh, worm is normally bigger than the uh, male worm. Okay, now the epidemiology is basically trichuris is a uh, nematode, as I said, it's basically one of the round worms and uh, normally likes uh, the large intestines. That's where the infestation happens. So it's usually asymptomatic, uh, but it becomes a problem when we have heavy infestation and we start having GI symptoms. And we look at that. So, in terms of distribution, it's common in hot and humid climates, and especially in uh, children. Okay, now transmission is basically indirect, and as opposed to what we looked at uh, in um, enterobiasis, uh, the eggs uh, are passed into the feces, uh, and then they require to go to the soil for impregnation to happen. Okay, before it becomes infective. So, the issue of auto infection here is not there. And it's not possible because it doesn't occur. Impregnation happens. It has to go to the soil, and then it takes some time for it to become uh, infective. So, in terms of transmission, uh, mostly whip worms uh, they live in the intestines, and the eggs basically pass through feces. Uh, if the infected person uh, defecates outside or in feces of an infected person, uh, which is found in fertilizer, then the eggs are deposited on the soil. Okay, so they can mature in, into an infective uh, form later. So infection is normally caused by the ingestion of this uh, infective form of the eggs. And this uh, can happen either by hands or fingers uh, that have basically been contaminated uh, by putting on the mouth or by consuming vegetables that have been um, grown uh, uh, in an area that uh, they were fertilized with fresh feces and uh, they were not cooked uh, well or washed well or peeled. Now to look at the life cycle, um, it's quite almost similar with um, enterobiasis. The only thing is that we don't have that auto infection. So we have the embryonated eggs, which maybe have been released to the soil and then by whichever way they end up in the mouth, the eggs hatch into larvae in the small intestines. And then the larvae mature into basically adult uh, worms and they migrate now down to the larger intestine. These mature adult worms now, they attach to the mucosa there, at the cecum, the colon, and then that is where they'll be releasing their eggs. And remember, it's still in the large uh, intestines and that is where stool formation happens. So we expect now when this person passes stool, they pass uh, this stool together with these eggs. The eggs have to go to the soil uh, to become now embryonated so that they're infected. Okay, so this is what we are alluding to, is that you have the embryonated eggs, they go into the intestines, they hatch into larvae, the larvae uh, uh, also now they go to the, they become adults and then they penetrate into the mucus, uh, mucosa of the intestines, especially at the cecum and the colon. And then the adult worm starts releasing, uh, the gravid one starts releasing eggs. The eggs pass with feces and they have to go to the soil to become embryonated. And then once they're embryonated, they become uh, infective. Okay, now clinical infestation, again, we have the light infestation and the heavy inf infestation. So if, if we talk about light infection or infestation, we will not have a lot of problems. So it may be just asymptomatic. But when the infestation is heavy, then um, we'll have abdominal pain, bloody diarrhea, because remember it was attaching to the mucosa of um, the large intestines. Then we have weight loss, anemia, and obviously synophilia. Um, now, it's the problem with this, it gives a constant urge of like, wants to pass stool because of the irritation that is happening there. So we might have retro prolapse happening, especially in children. So you can see um, examples of from how the retro prolapse happens. Now, diagnosis is basically stool examination. So this one, you don't do like a tape test on the perianal. We, we actually look at the stool. So we take a stool sample and then it's smeared on a slide and then um, it's visualized. So when we have over 200 eggs per fecal smear in a slide, it's indicative of um, um, a heavy infestation. So treatment is also quite simple. My bendazole 100 milligrams given uh, either uh, three times a day for, for three days or two, day, two times a day for three days. Albendazole also can also be used for the treatment. 
Now, prevention and control, we have, um, if you have adequate water uh, supply, which is safe, we can help you in washing the hands, washing the uh, food like fruits or vegetables, and you do away with the worms. So facilitation for proper uh, disposal of the feces, because we've seen people who um, defecate around other areas other than the, 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 the proper uh, toilets, then uh, we, we give chance for the eggs to burn it. Uh, prevention of the fecal contamination of food, discourage uh, use of fresh uh, feces and manure. Apparently, there are people who do this and washing of fruits very well. Uh, use of uh, drying racks for utensils so that they don't stay on the soil, they above the soil and dust. And then also periodic deworming of children in these endemic areas.